Hopefully you all know that what you're looking at right in front of you is a submarine that somehow ended up in this hole, dropped from a plane and made this huge crater. And um, that's how it sat. Nobody knows how it got there. Wait, no, that's not how that happened. That is an underground propane tank. This is where a lot of NFPA 58 and fire department regulations here in the Commonwealth start to cross over. Like if you went there, if you were on this job and you came there and you were going to hook that polyethylene pipe that you're seeing off to the side, that is polyethylene pipe. You go there. Are you serious? You really would hook that up? Because that's a plumber's job or a gas fitter's job. It can be done just by an LP company. But you should all know everything you're doing right now allows you to do the connections to the regulator that are inside there, first stage regulator, first stage regulator underneath that cover, and then all this piping. And as you look at this piping, hopefully you're recognizing a couple things that from the first stage regulator through that piping, you have 10 PSI of gas pressure going up to on the building a second stage regulator, which is kicking it down to 11 inches water column, which is less than a half a pound, which is what's going into the building. So all of this is part of us, if you didn't know, part of what you're going to be actually tested on as well. You always hear people say, hey, how do we get tested on LP? I've never worked on LP a lot. Or like I heard Saturday, a lot of people just work on LP and never see natural gas, but they all cross over in some way, shape or form. As a licensee, you walk up to a job like this and see that propane tank. Maybe you don't know right now, but that's a disaster. Rained out, the trench caved in, there's all kinds of rocks. This bag here, the only one you can see in this picture, because there always should be at least two, is what they call a cathodic bag that actually controls any electricity that is underground so the tank doesn't prematurely rot. The other thing on this picture is you see all this wire. That is 14 gauge tracer wire to locate that um, polyethylene tubing after everything is backfilled. That is a mess. The excavator and people are gonna think, wow, I, this is supposed to be where the pipe is. This is ridiculous craftsmanship. Yeah, they had some problems, but I was scheduled for an inspection. Do you really think I could pass that? Absolutely not. That was a fail, puke shit, you name it, call me up and cancel. Get your crap in order and clean it up. So again, that's underground propane tank. Would be backfilled with sand. In some cases, in high water table areas, there would have had to have been a concrete pad poured and straps with rings fastened down to the concrete pad. And this is another angle of that same LP tank, underground LP tank, and even the fire department nut, yeah, rocks laying against it. Here's the crazy shit with the 14 gauge tracer wire, not even with the pipe. And you're seeing two tracer wires because you can't see yet, but this is going across here and then teeing off to another building. Here's the angle of it just after the tank. So in your picture, the tank was over here. Right now, I want you to concentrate on the 14 gauge tracer wire. Because after everything is backfilled and something else later on down the road is going to happen in that site, people will maybe want to dig a pool in, do a walkway, do something. There's going to be digging involved. That tracer wire is designed to run a little bit of an electric current through it because it's assumed it's following the pipe. There are actually clips that go along this pipe that you can snap this tracer wire right into. And then you're also seeing tape, that foil tape on the ground. As far as the code book is concerned, the 14 gauge trace wire is the tape or the tape. It's truly either or. You don't have to use both. Most people use both, though, because the trace of wire stays with the tube right at the level of the tube or like an inch or two above it if you're using the clips, not like you're seeing it here, because right now, that's where the wire is. That's where they think the pipe is. The tape, just seeing there, 
usually gets buried about six inches below the finished grade and about a foot before, and it ends up being a foot before the pipe is actually located. So there's a couple of safety pieces going on there that people like to do. An inspector's perspective, can I say you need both? Nope. Do I recommend both? Nope, I don't. Because if you have the tracer wire and you locate the pipe and the person installed it right, you shouldn't hit a pipe. You should know when you're getting there, you should start hand digging these trenches. The initial installation of the job, you should really be complying with the code and making sure your installation is proper. Again, if you have questions, 